Welcome to the lecture. I'm Cynthia McAllister. In this lecture, you will learn about the Cooperative Unison Reading Format, including its primary aim and procedures. This lecture also includes a full description of the Cooperative Unison Reading Method. The primary aim of Cooperative Unison Reading is to provide opportunities for students to participate in pluralistic, democratic discourse procedures. These practices allow students the chance to become adept in perspective shifting and cooperative reasoning, to gain access to knowledge, and to develop literacy competencies. This video presents a brief introduction to cooperative unison reading. A more comprehensive overview of the method is presented in the print book, Unison Reading, Socially Inclusive Group Instruction for Equity and Achievement. The summary procedures for cooperative unison reading are as follows. Number one, students meet in designated groups. Students convene quickly and come to the meeting prepared. The group leader brings copies of the text in the cooperative unison reading bin, which contains a whiteboard, marker, and eraser, cooperative unison reading rules in a rubric, a dictionary or atlas, or a tablet. Students identify the action or the intention of the text and decide on a reading stance. So based on the genre, they need to determine what the text is trying to do and what they should in turn do in response to the text. Based on this stance, they assume, students select a place in the text to begin, with the group leader initiating the process. Groups that meet for a second, third, or fourth time will resume reading where they left off the day before. Students adhere to the rules of cooperative unison reading by reading aloud in sync in a voice others can hear, breaching or stopping the group with questions or comments, and promoting others' learning. Students cooperate and contribute evenly to resolving confusions as they arise. They resume reading at the beginning of the sentence where the breach occurred only after the breach is resolved. When time is up, students briefly recount specific behaviors that positively or negatively impacted the group process and establish goals for their next meeting. And finally, group leaders collect materials. The materials you'll need for cooperative unison reading are the reading record, the reading rubric, bins for each cooperative unison reading table, including a dictionary, atlas, whiteboard, dry erase marker, and eraser, small tables for unison reading groups, preferably round ones, cooperative unison reading logs, not to be filled in during groups, but after in some classes, and cooperative unison reading analysis forms. The cooperative unison reading rubric specifies criteria that distinguish high quality groups. The rubric serves as a set of ordinances or rules to govern the social practices within groups. Teachers can use the rubric to guide and reflect upon their practice. They can also use it as a teaching tool to educate students about their roles and responsibilities within the format. And it can be used by school leaders to guide teacher observations. Cooperative unison reading is an instructional method that harnesses students' natural cooperative capacities and language abilities as a primary force for learning about reading, writing, and literacy. The system is simple. Each week, a few group leaders are responsible for selecting a text that the rest of their classmates have signed up to read with them. Groups meet several times over the course of the week. In elementary classrooms, twice with a teacher and twice independently, and in high school classrooms, where classes meet fewer times each week, meetings with the teachers will be less frequent. Cooperative unison reading rotations are week-long. The whole process begins again the following week. Over the course of the year, every child will have the opportunity to read at least 40 different texts of their choosing in cooperative unison reading groups, typically half of which involve the presence of a teacher. Students use the format of cooperative unison reading to deliberate over a range of different genres. It carves out social space across grade levels and content areas for students to exercise in public speech ways of reading that will later become internalized into inner speech or working memory in the medium of their reading comprehension. Cooperative unison reading involves a small group of no more than five children in an oral synchronized reading of a joint text and revolves around three simple rules. Rule number one, read in sync with others in a voice they can hear. 
Rule number two, breach or stop the group when you have a question or something to say. And rule number three, be promotive and supportive of group members. These rules are applied in cooperative unison reading sessions for children of all ages, kindergarten through college. And this is what they do. Rule number one creates the phenomenon of a shared experience that makes reading tangible and concrete so that it can be accessed by all participants. Rule number two helps guarantee that any questions or confusions are resolved so that the text is fully understood by all participants. It also provides an avenue for unique and particular insights about the content of the text to be shared so as to broaden the collective understanding and develop higher order thinking and comprehension abilities. And it provides a way and an experience for students to read text carefully and closely. Rule number three guarantees a safe and comfortable social context for all participants to freely express their ideas and to derive satisfaction from the group experience. With these conditions in place, any group of children have the means to interpret a text. The basic ground rule that all members read aloud audibly the same words at the same time provides the opportunity for all group members to practice their reading skills as well as utilize their oral language abilities to resolve confusions that arise whenever mistakes or anomalies occur in the reading. Oral discussions that attempt to resolve these breaches necessarily turn to aspects of written language, such as letter, word, and syntactic properties, as well as to issues of meaning and understanding. Since others' perspectives are seen to be key to deepening understanding about how texts work and what they mean, the social dimensions of the group reading experience are emphasized on a par with content. Indeed, others' perspectives are a prerequisite to the acquisition of skills. The cooperative unison reading format draws its inspiration from a variety of sources, including John Dewey's emphasis on the importance of agency and responsibility for education in a democracy, Lev Vygotsky's emphasis on the importance of learning from one's peers as well as from teachers, Jerome Bruner's theory of formats for scaffolding social interactions, Christina Erling's explanation for how social norms provide the framework for learning and development, and David Olson's analysis of the relation between social accountability and self-control. Scheduling group rotations. Cooperative unison reading groups meet four times per week typically in elementary classrooms for 15 to 20 minute sessions. In upper grade classrooms, they meet in any combination of meeting times that total a full 60 minutes per week in each class where cooperative unison reading is implemented. Create a schedule to allow students to meet four days a week at the elementary level and at least three days a week in upper grades. Also create schedules for shorter two and three day weeks to run on the weeks when there is school vacation. Groups can run simultaneously and back to back during the work time format. These schedules will remain permanent throughout the year. Typically, half the sessions are held with the teacher and half are held independently. In some high schools, unison reading occurs in every content subject. In many schools where unison reading is implemented, a standalone reading block exists so that students can have opportunities to read text across a variety of genres outside of the particular content subjects associated with their content classes. The primary emphasis is that students should have the freedom to select text from a broad menu of options. You should calculate the total number of cooperative unison reading group slots based on the number of students in your class. First, divide your class evenly into subgroups of no more than five students. The number of students in a group should never exceed five, since it's exceedingly difficult, if not impossible, for students to attend to the behaviors of more than four other people at once. And join attention is a critical factor in the cooperative unison reading method. For example, in a class of 26 students, you'd create six groups, and in a class of 32 students, you'd create seven. Identifying group leaders. Every cooperative unison reading group has a leader. It's the leader's responsibility to select a text, gather group members, distribute text and materials, and collect them when the group concludes. 
Leaders are also responsible to keep track of the schedule. Once the group has collectively decided what to read, the group leader gets the group started typically by counting 1, 2, 3 or ready, set, read. To organize a system of rotating group leadership, divide the class by the number of groups you need to run each week. Given a class of 25 students, leadership rotation is divided among five groups of five students. You should use a class list or an instructional priority list and divide the list into a specified number of groups. You can have students count off by the number of groups you need, you can draw names, or you can assign students to groups yourself to reflect a balance of reading and language abilities. These group leader subgroups should remain permanent all year long. Group leadership rotates every week, so all students have equal opportunities throughout the year to experience leadership and its benefits. Leadership opportunities should never be used as a reward, since it's a responsibility that's distributed evenly. Every student in the class assumes a leadership role every five weeks. Group leader responsibilities. The group leader is responsible for selecting the text to be read. Once groups are formed and it's time for the group to meet, it's the group leader's responsibility to convene the group, distribute copies of the text, and to guide the group in a discussion of where to begin. The group leader collects the text at the conclusion of the session. In cooperative unison reading, students form their own groups by signing up for the text that they want to read or joining groups with people they want to work with. When a prospective cooperative unison reading leader examines a sampling of text with a group in mind, she or he is pressed to view the text from a more critical set of perspectives. Selecting a specific text for a group symbolizes a kind of investment against which others' reactions and opinions are significant. These factors allow the entire experience of reading and all the learning that goes with it to become more memorable. Text selection is a form of comprehension. Text types. What types of texts are good candidates for cooperative unison reading? Two basic rules apply. A text has to be interesting, and it has to be short enough for a group to reasonably get through in a week's time. Unison reading is a slow process, so long text should be discouraged. Aside from these two rules, anything goes. Short feature articles, short stories, comics, book reviews, gossip columns, game reviews, all are options. In subject classes, Sections from content textbooks or shorter segments of text that make unusual demands on readers, such as technical, scientific, expository texts, or narratives with complex grammar and arcane vocabulary are some common examples. Non-conventional reading materials are also appropriate, such as greeting cards, ticket stubs, restaurant menus, blogs, invitation, billboard ads, and subway advertisements all make for great following conversation and learning. Scheduling text selection. A schedule should be established indicating deadlines for students to select text, the days that texts are photocopied, and the days that subgroups sign up for the following week's readings. A system for photocopying text should be organized centrally so that A, the office staff is prepared to support the clerical demands of the program, or that B, photocopiers are dispersed in classrooms so that teachers themselves or their students can photocopy text such as one photocopier per grade. iPads can also be used in place of photocopied text. It's just important for students to be able to refer to each other's readings. The process of joining groups. At the end of each week, each student should have the opportunity to sign up for next week's Cooperative Unison Reading Group. This process not only distributes responsibility for classroom procedures to students, it also requires them to take agency in developing their identities as readers. Every week, in signing up to participate in discussions about specific topics, students have the chance to make declarations about who they wish to become through the groups that they will sign up for and through the text that they desire to read. The sign-up procedure works like this. Once group leaders have selected their texts, they're posted, 
usually on a permanent cooperative unison reading display center in the classroom. Some opportunities should be provided for students to become familiar with selections of text in any of the following ways. For example, students can take responsibility to browse text selections during work time. Selections can be presented to the class by the teacher or group leaders during a whole class meeting in place of a lesson. This can offer the opportunity for a genre exposure lesson and groups can also be called up in turn to browse as part of the sign up process. Create a sign up system. Then provide time for students to explore text possibilities. Once students make their choices they can sign their name or insert a token of some type labeled with their name such as popsicle sticks or index cards. But here's a note of caution. Some students aren't above rigging the sign-up process in order to manipulate their way into a text selection that's closed at the five-person cap, so keep your eye on the process. Group formation. Groups form for a variety of reasons, none of which should be ability level. The majority of students join groups for the main purpose of reading the featured text especially after the cooperative unison reading process is established and students become comfortable with one another. But it's inevitable that some will make choices out of social motivations. This is a way for students to have agency over the social world of school and doesn't need to be discouraged. The cooperative unison reading process limits the possibility that cliques will use groups as a shelter or that close friends won't venture to interact with others since sign-up occurs based on established rotating orders and groups close after they're filled at five members. There's a principle of game-like fun that needs to be kept in mind. Keep cooperative unison reading in a game-like spirit. It's human nature, especially in children, to attend to rules of games. Games have an almost magical effect in inviting children to eagerly participate. So attend to students' behaviors in the spirit of the game and help them experience cooperative unison reading as a fun and enjoyable experience. Who invented the rule that reading lessons should be somber and boring and tedious anyway? The cooperative unison reading record is a way to capture and analyze group discourse patterns. In addition to being used to record and assess the group reading process, the record has several other important uses. It can be used as an instructional tool to show students patterns of action and participation in their group. For example, when two students are dominating in a group and others are being left to the side or are not participating, you can show the record and ask the students to think about patterns of interaction and how to more evenly distribute their conversation. It can be used as a curriculum planning resource when teachers examine records for content that's highly relevant to the majority of students in the classroom and might warrant reteaching in the form of a grassroots lesson. And Records can be archived to serve as evidence of learning opportunities. Cooperative unison reading breaks with convention. It overturns traditional teacher-centered approaches to small group reading that are usually organized by skill or ability. Students take turns initiating and managing activities of the group through choosing materials, setting goals, and with the teacher's help, monitoring their achievements. Cooperative unison reading provides instruction through a pragmatic and organic system that allows learners to take on and manage responsibility for learning as they encounter challenges and difficulties in the text. These encounters with challenge represent the sites of growing skills and competencies. Conventional small group reading instruction is typically organized by reading level or ability and students are provided with predetermined instructional plans based on teacher assessments or assumptions about which skills and competencies require attention. The problem with this kind of instruction is fivefold. First, the teacher assumes total responsibility for determining what points in a text deserve instructional attention. In actual fact, the organic reading process depends on the reader's meta-awareness and ability to attend to cues that support the construction of meaning. By teachers assuming this responsibility, one of the most important facets of competent reading is taken away from students. Second, this approach is based on an overly cognitive view of reading, which assumes that learning to read consists of an accumulation of skills. This view defies current conceptions of literacy as a self-organizing, socially motivated, socially mediated process through which skills and background abilities develop 
as a result of practice and in which the reader's intentions govern the way they interact with the text. Third, the routines of skill-based grouping minimize students' agency and autonomy in the instructional process, limiting the potential for students' motivation and engagement to develop. Fourth, leveled groups function to stratify the classroom, preventing interaction of students between groups. Relatedly, ability groups have been shown to be detrimental to minority students' reading achievement. So let's summarize and review. In this lecture, you learned about cooperative unison reading. You learned about the primary aim and basic procedures of the format. Without referring back to the lecture, see if you can explain the logic of cooperative unison reading. What insights in students is the practice intended to develop? And here's a suggestion for professional development. Helping students learn to improve their ability to share and shift perspectives and reason with others cooperatively is a key to supporting their learning. The more effectively you implement cooperative unison reading, the more you will improve as a teacher. Because of this huge impact on learning, cooperative unison reading is considered a high impact format and should be the focus of school-wide professional development throughout the year, every teacher should consistently take advantage of opportunities to observe colleagues who are proficient in the cooperative unison reading method, to engage in self-reflection of their own unison formats, to set goals for improvement, and to repeat the cycle on an ongoing basis.